Good morning. Um, I am going to be making a batch of pickles today. Um, we're going down to my father-in-law's for Thanksgiving and he asked for some new pickles. Um, I already have bread and butter ones done that he can have, but we're going to make some more dill pickles today. For me, the first thing I do is start my pressure canning, or not pressure, my um, water bath canning water. Um, it takes forever on an electric stove for a pot this size to come to boil. So if I start it right away, I know by the time I get everybody chopped and ready, he's going to be ready to go. And I oven sterilize my cans or my jars, um, 225 for at least 10 minutes. Again, I just get both of those started and ready to go. That way they're ready when we need it. For pickles, um, have my Pamela Jeff cutting board and crinkle cutter. He's sharp. He's got his guide on. A uh, nice sharp knife. Um, my canner can hold seven quart jars, so that's what we've got. We've got the lids. These are the wide mouth um, for pickles. That's easier because you're going to be putting the pickles in there. Um, a thing of pickle mix. Um, I actually add more seasonings to this and double the liquid amount. It's definitely always better to have extra pickling liquid than not enough and have things too dry. And then let me grab this and then I'll take you over to the table where we're going to cut everybody up. Do not drop the knife. So I've got all our cucumbers. Um, I have a towel down because as you're slicing things and things get juicy, I don't want to have to wash the tablecloth all the time. So that'll kind of, if it gets too juicy, especially if you're doing like salsa or tomatoes or something, it makes a mess. All my cucumbers, I have a bowl for the ones that are ready to go. And then I'm gonna get a bowl to put my ends and if I need to um, cut off any blemishes, cause then that will go outside in our compost bin. So I will show you how I cut these in just a second. All right, we've got, got my garbage bowl. So first thing you do is cut off both ends. So you've got to work with, and then I'm gonna do first some of the crinkle slices. Um, you can see this guy has a little bit of a learning curve just to get it um, as thin as you want. Um, we like a thicker pickle, so this, I can't measure. There's inches down here, probably about a quarter inch because this comes with a measury thing. Um, we're good with a thicker pickle. If you want it thinner, it might be a little harder on that. Um, you can always use a mandolin slicer to get them thin for slices. If that's what you want there, they'd be flat instead of crinkle. Um, but I'll do probably over half of what we've got in the cucumbers and the crinkle. And then I'll do the rest um, just with a regular knife and two spears. And then I put them in, I'll show you when we get that far, mixed in the jar. Um, I'll put the spears on the bottom and then the crinkles on the top so you get both shapes and sizes in one jar. So I'm going to sit and do this for probably about another hour. Not that long, but a good amount of time to get all of these sliced up and uh, ready to go. All right, I'm almost done slicing. I have a whole lot of spears and then even more of the slices. Um, but I'm just going to kind of show you how I cut. I can do this with one hand. So for these ones, since they're so long, I'll cut them in half. Oh, one-handed. And then cut them in half this way and then turn it into four. So this eight slices is from one half of this. So like half, half, and then split them this way. Um, these fit really nice in the jar um, because they're triangle, they compact really well when you're putting them um, in the bottom of the jar. Um, and then they're just like the good, a good size for a good pickle. He's a good spear. Um, I'm gonna do probably one of these spears and then all the rest I'll put in the slices to do those. Um, you can see they're a little bit different sizes. Um, that's fine, they'll still pickle up the same. Like I said, with the um, with this slicer, because you have to kind of do it in a chop quick to get through the skin, um, they're not gonna be all, I mean, they're fairly consistent. Um, you can see compared to like this guy, this guy's a lot thicker. Um, Sometimes if I miss and get it too thick, I'll take my trusty utility knife and um, cut it in half. Um, and then I am just personally not comfortable using this at like the end 
So once I get to the end of each one, then I'll just use the knife to cut into standard flat slices just because I probably have an irrational fear of cutting my fingers off. But that's where we are now. Um, I can hear the water in the canner making noise. I can all but guarantee it's not boiling yet. Um, but then we're gonna, once we get these last ones cut, we'll make our brine with the vinegar, water, and the spices. So that will be what we're doing next. Oh, my canner is almost boiling. I've got the seasonings all in the pan when I almost doubled the amount of liquid that's in the recipe. Got my spears and slices. I'm gonna take my jars out of the oven and you wanna touch the inside as little as possible because you want as little of the germs on there as possible. Obviously you're gonna have to touch it a little bit because you're stuffing the um, cucumbers in there, but you wanna do it as little as you can. And I've got my lid starting to boil in the back. And we missed a couple steps just because I'm filming this myself and I can't do two hands. So you have the brine here going, that's where my lids were. So we can see I have the spears in the bottom and slices on the top. So how I do it is I'll take a jar out, pack it, um, get it as full as you can. You want as little air space as possible. Um, get it all packed in there fully. Then I add, use a measure cup just to pour in the brine. Then I'll take my lid from the boiling with my little magnet stick, put it on the top and twist on my lid. Again, you wanna to touch this with your hands as little as possible. One, because it's hot and two for germs. Um, I do have some left that this particular recipe can just be, <coughs> excuse me, for fridge pickles too. So since my canner can only fit these seven jars, I'll probably do another jar worth of fridge pickles with the brine that I have left. Um, and then the rest, my husband can just eat the cucumbers with his lunches. So um, it has this rack. Let me see if we're at a rolling boil, pardon the steam. Yeah, so we're at a good rolling boil. That's how you want it. Not bubbles, not like halfway. You want a good rolling, sorry, we're standing everything here, boil. The lid is hot. So then, see how much of this I can do with one hand. This guy has little notches. So he's gonna sit on top of the canner. Let me do that and I'll put the jars on there and then I can show you then. Okay, so you can see how the wrap fits on those notches and then I put all my jars in. You want them to make sure they're not touching so that the bowl and water can get all the way around them. And you want enough water in your pot that when you submerge them, they cover it completely. Um, it doesn't have to be by a lot, but you want the water to come up over the lids. So let me put this down again. I will submerge them and we'll double check that. Okay, so mine submerges by probably about an inch, so that's pretty good. And then we're gonna let that, we're gonna cover it, we're gonna let it come up, and then I will check how long it processes for in my recipe book. I wanna say it's like 20 minutes, but let's check. Quart jars, 15 minutes, and then let stand for five. So now that this is processing, we're gonna set a timer for 15 minutes. And then when that's done, we'll use my silicone hot mitts to pick it up out of the water and then just let it sit for five minutes before we transfer it back to the towel um, to let it rest and let the thing pop. Um, I'm gonna use the rest of those cucumbers and some brine for a fridge pickle jar. And then we'll be back when this is done processing. All right, we have done our processing time and our sitting time. So when you get a cannon kit, you get this the magnet thing I threw on the floor, but then also one of these guys. So we're gonna carefully take these out. I like to tip the water off the top and then place them on the towel. You're gonna let these sit, generally speaking, overnight. Um, I woke up crazy early today, so it's only not even 10 o'clock yet. Um, so I might be able to put these away after dinner but we'll see. But what you'll need to do is after they sit out, like I said, either overnight or 24 hours or however long, this little button, you wanna make sure that he is, see if they're all, they might already be down. That's hot. Uh, make sure they're down. That's what means that the heat created enough suction to make this seal. And that's what actually is like the canning process is making sure that that is safe. And then I will show you 
hopefully, if I remember, um, how I check to make sure it's a good seal. Um, if they don't seal, that's okay. It doesn't mean it's bad right now. It just means it's not shelf stable. Um, so it means you can't like store it for months like you could if it's sealed. Um, if it's not sealed, so it's not shelf stable, um, that just means that one goes in the fridge and you eat that one first and the rest of them that are sealed, that's what you'll put in the fridge. Um, this is a messy process um, and it's hot. Um, I have, I mean, it is a nice day. Yes, it's November, but it is almost 70 degrees out. But this is a giant mass of boiling water. The brine is boiling water. And then the oven was on for the sterilizing of the jars. So overall, this is one that's a lovely thing to do in the winter when you can crack the window and get that cool air in, or you can do like I'm doing and I'm in shorts and a tank top. Um, home alone, so hi kitten. But yeah, that is how we'll do pickles. Um, and like I said, if I remember, I'll tell you in case I forget. So once these cool, um, they're sitting, um, or tomorrow morning, I will unscrew the lid piece. First I'll make sure all the buttons are down. But then unscrew this, don't pull hard, but kind of run my finger up to see if I can pop the actual lid off of the ring. Obviously, if it pops off, it wasn't sealed correctly, um, so that one would go in the fridge. But other than that, it should be good. And when you store them in your cupboard, I keep my rings on just so that I remember how many rings to jars that I have. But you actually don't want it on there tight because if the ring, the twist part is holding on tight. I wonder if I can get one of the other jars and show you. Um, if the ring is holding the lid on tight, you might not be able to know if it popped and is spoiled or spoiled. So these are bread and butter pickles and hand. Make sure so you can see the lid is just like finger spun on there just so that I keep it together. Actually, I can do it on this one to show. So when these are cool, this is what I'll do is I'll take the ring off kind of like make sure that if I put a little pressure on there it's not coming up and then that's all I'll tighten it for to put it back in the in the cupboard so that there's no pressure from the ring on the lid that's holding it down if it's not sealed correctly but that's so I know I have a match number of lids to jars and then that was bread and butter those go up there I have salsa, I have pickles, I have bread and butter pickles and dill. That is um, apple pie filling. That we're working on it. Um, once we have a garden, we'd like to do tomatoes and our own homemade salsa, but that's where we're at now. So hopefully these guys will all turn out good. All the seals will be good. And that's how you make homemade dill pickles.